All right, guys. We're here with the 1v1, Beast vs. Apimlo. We call him APM. We've seen these guys play a few times. Um, this is Doom Joker with I Win Quaffle, casting from Why So Serious Starcraft. Yeah. Uh, if you've watched any other cast on our channel, you see that they are four-fifths of our videos. <laughs> but they're yeah. good friends of ours, and they're amazing players, and they always bring exciting games. Yep, indeed. And uh, B foot random, I believe, and APM went toss. So it looks like it's going to be a PvP here on Metalopolis. Uh, very exciting. Uh, controversial mash matchup. Many people don't like it, but it is my favorite. Because I am a toss <laughs> player, and I love to watch toss the new... Toss player. <laughs> I'm, I'm a biased toss player. So, um... Because you're, uh, you play a lot of PvP and stuff, what do you think is going to be some strong openings for these two players? Well, obviously you can't ignore the full gate, so uh, you have two choices, basically. You four gate aggressively, or you do some kind of build that defends the four gate. And it's really um, a metagame type thing, and I know a lot of people don't like the word metagame, but when you, let's say you do something like a DT rush, against a, an opponent you know doesn't foregate, that's kind of metagaming, because in a way you know this player isn't going to rush you, so you can get away with a risky build like that. And that's what a lot yeah. of PvP is right now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we see them both scouting wrong positions right off the bat. This is not MLG Metalopolis, so we don't have the neutral supply depot at the bottom. Right. Which, um, I like. I mean, in, in PvP, you're not going to see someone get canyoned in. So right. the only type of different type of play you would see was would be close by ground positions, which, in, <laughs> uh, of course, we all know that Protoss can warp in units, so the distance from your base only counts towards, let's say, a Colossus or a Stargate timing. Absolutely. Great points, and we see they look like they're basically going the same timing on their gateways. Yep. They're about to pop, both going to pop at the same time. Um, yeah. APM is a lot slower on his gas. So this, if he's going to do some kind of early rush, this is going to reduce uh, the time of his warp gate, which can mean a lot if Beast decides to do a full gate. Even so much so yeah. that one warp, being a warp, uh, a warp in late can actually lose you the game. Oh, absolutely. StarCraft is so key on timing, and, uh, I mean, if you're just caught off by five to six seconds, a battle a battle can end in, in ten to ten seconds, a battle could be basically over if you're not ready for it, so. Exactly, and especially in a PvP match. Oh, APM is actually throwing down a forge, which I find very interesting. I'm not really sure what he's going to do with this. Maybe he will do a, a fast expand. Uh, maybe he's going to try to protect some kind of tech that he's going to do. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this will be good to see uh, what's going to what's going to happen here. I mean, we did watch that that uh, PVP of them before on Zelnaga when <laughs> APM did some crazy building bait. Oh, he did cancel the forge. Cancel the forge, huh. threw down a gateway. Exciting. So, uh, possibly did uh, did he scout that? Yes, he did forge? scout the forge. Okay. So Beast possibly still thinks there's a forge going on right now, so this could be interesting. But it looks like the probe from Beast is going to scout this before a stalker gets out. Yep, Ooh. did scout it. Oh, he's in! Oh, he almost got almost. in! He meant to click on a mineral field, but he must have misclicked and allowed the Zealot to get a few ex uh, an extra hit off, which killed the probe, unfortunately. Yeah. And we got a stalker from Beast poking up APM's, APM's um, base here, checking out what's going on. And we see APM going for a Twilight Council. Ooh. Uh, he does have three gates going down and didn't get early gases, so I'm going to assume this is going to be Blink Stalkers. Awesome. Um, and Warp Tech is just about done for Beast. He only has two gates right now. There's maybe a little two-gate pressure going on here. Yep, and it looks like Beast is setting up to expand off two gates. Which is very, very risky against uh, a protest that decides to be aggressive. But right now, no one's going to kill each other. So they're just going to use little pokes that we see at the front of APM's base. So 
Council. I, I like how they hide the Twilight Council. I like how APM hides it in the fog. You know, it's going to be really tough for Beast to know that's there. Even when he's up in the base, he has to go back there and check it out. And APM looks like he's setting up to throw down a dark shrine. And he oh. does. Okay. Oh, this could be awesome because Beast has no detection, no robo, no forge. Beast, this could be dangerous. Beast does have a robo going down, and he will absolutely oh. be able to get an observer out in time. But if he decides to just pump out Immortals, or his Observer is out of place, he could lose the game because of that. Yeah, he could take some serious damage here. Let's see what he opts to go. I hope he... I don't know, you think he's going to go um, Observer first? Definitely. Uh, okay. Beast seems like more of a, a, a player that likes to scout his opponent, and he does, we just see the Observer. You're absolutely right, yep. He's getting the Observer out, cornering it out. He might be okay if, he, if it's in good position. Yes. If it's in good position, he will be very far ahead of APM. If it's not... Uh, APM will definitely take the lead. It looks like APM is kind of poking up here. Doesn't see any forces. I don't know why he's staying there. Sniping the pylon. Good sniping. And uh, looks like he's backing out. He's going to lose a stalker. Possibly two. Nope. He's going to lose one stalker. Ooh. Ooh, almost two. Almost two. I don't... So where's he's at? He hasn't... Oh, there were... Uh, he hasn't made any yet, huh? Nope, not yet. Uh, he does have a lot of gas saved up, though. <laughs> so... You could easily work a few in. They do cost 125 and 125, so they're, yes. they're very expensive. Yep, so APM also throwing up his expansion. It's just popping right now, throwing on two more gates to support that. And here comes three Dark Templar right now. Oh, just yes. Two. Oh, and he's making an Archon. Oh, Archon, here we go. Oh, this is very cool. This beast does have an Observer. He might have spotted that, that Observer, because you can't see the Observers. Kind of like a uh, like a predator's predator's cloak, you know. You ever seen the movie Predator? I have, yeah. You kind of see him a little bit, but yeah. So you might have spotted that and just said, you know, the DTs aren't going to work. Thrown straight to Archon, which Archon in the last patch got bumped up a little bit in power and range. Too. Yes, they went from two range to three range, and they are now counted as massive units. And this plays a huge role in PvP since Archons can now break force fields. Ooh, yeah. Wait, they can break force fields? What does that mean? It means if a force field is down and the Archon touches the force field, the force field goes away. Oh, what? No way. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Crazy. It's very nice because then a lot of times for PvP, before the patch, you needed a Colossus if your opponent uh, basically locked you inside your base. Yeah. Um, you need that or you need the warp units on the low ground. Which right. is very hard because then your army would get split up, and it just was a poor decision. Wow, I did not know and that. That's awesome. Yeah, and it basically made Colossus versus Colossus a necessary battle. Oh yeah. Obviously, you can do some uh, hardcore micro to avoid the Colossus, but Archons now become much more useful. That is awesome. We do have a Colossus with extended thermal lance coming out.